This is a Kenwood TS520 I bought on eBay about a year and a half ago. Uh, it was a tech special, and I don't remember what the man actually said was wrong with it. I bought it at the same time that I bought a TS520S, and uh, that's in one of my earlier videos. I got that one working. It was a pretty easy fix. This one had a lot of problems, and so I started by checking the power supply, and uh, what I saw was that these two capacitors right here were leaking and uh, also the diodes there weren't working properly and so I decided to just get in and change both. I bought these these um, capacitors on eBay. I bought four, put two in the TS520S uh, and two in here. Could never go wrong with new capacitors and so on the other radio I just didn't want to fool with it. I just changed them out. These radios are quite old and so things are going to go if you have the opportunity to change it, it's open, go ahead and do it. And that's the way I feel. So anyway, I changed those out, and that took care of the power supply. So when I turned the radio on, radio on, it didn't receive and it didn't transmit. I could hear some, some noise in there, some white noise, but it just wasn't uh, receiving at all. So I went in and I decided to start with the VFO um, right here. The VFO just didn't seem to have anything coming out of it. And so you can check it by going into a pin right over here. Uh, that's where the VFO goes in, and the was, signal was just erratic. It was all over the place. So I decided that if I could just get in there and um, calibrate the VFO, that would be the problem. So I hooked the frequency counter to the output here, to the pin I just showed you, and uh, I calibrated the VFO, and it was way out. And uh, But it still didn't work. And so I decided, well, perhaps it just needs a good cleaning. I should have known because it was putting a signal out, but I went ahead and pulled it, as you'll see in these next few pictures. Um, I pulled the, v the VFO out and cleaned it, which doesn't hurt. It's, it always needs a good cleaning, so this is how, what it looked like when I pulled it out. Now, I put it all back together, and I still had no signal, so the next thing was to trace it through. I traced it through and I came to the function switch, the switch that um, goes from VFO to VFO fixed to the calibrator signal, all the different functions. And uh, it wasn't working. The function switch, uh, the VFO light wasn't coming on or anything. So I decided I better, uh, I better investigate that. This is the function switch. And I was hoping for a broken wire or something, an easy fix. I'm always hoping. Um, there wasn't one. There was no broken wire in the function switch. So I did some checks, uh, ran some continuity checks from the plug back here, and decided that there was something going on inside that function switch, something not very good. So I pulled it apart, as you'll see in the next pictures, and found that the contacts within the switch were very worn. Uh, they were flattened out. They weren't making contact. The whole thing was a mess. So I cleaned the plates, pulled the wafers out, bought some sheet metal, some sheet brass, which is what the contacts were made of, cut them, and put them in and reassemble the whole thing several times, to be really honest with you, and it worked. Um, these are the pictures of it taken apart. So with the function switch put back together, cleaned, dialed into uh, VFO, the light came on, signals were coming in, I considered it mission accomplished, if that reminds you of anything. And unfortunately, if this reminds you of anything, the mission wasn't accomplished. It wouldn't transmit. Um, got a good signal coming in, couldn't even tune it up. It would not, there was no power going out. So I started on the, that problem. Now I started at the generator board. I wanted to see if there was anything coming out. And so I checked and on receive, I had car a carrier signal, which you have to have a carrier signal. Without the carrier signal, is, there's nothing going on. And I had it here on receive, but on transmit, it dropped to zero. So with no carrier signal at the generator board, I traced it back or moved my way back to the carrier board. At the carrier board, I should have had a signal right here, which would go to the generator board, and there was none there. So I worked my way back 
through all, this, all these wires right down to here. And to my chagrin, it went into the um, mode switch, which is a switch a lot like the function switch, only with a lot more wires. I was really not looking forward to taking that apart. It was just, I was hoping beyond hope it was something else. So what I did is I pulled this switch out through the back and uh, was able to find the wire that comes from the carrier board to the switch. There was continuity there. But when I checked for the 9 volts that, was, that should be coming in, it wasn't there. And so it made me feel really good because without the 9 volts, nothing will work, which means possibly the switch was okay. So the red wire from the function switch, the power wire, came to the RF board. At the RF board, it connected to pin RTL, which according to the schematic was fine. There was also a wire just dangling here, a red wire, not soldered to anything. And so this is where the mystery really starts to unravel. I had to find out where that wire went. So I took that wire, ran a continuity check with that wire and the mode switch, and decided that that was the wire that should be feeding 9 volts to the mode switch. So I got the schematic out. And sometimes schematics are a little misleading because there are branches that go out off your main main line. And in this case, it appeared that the power was coming from somewhere else, but actually it was coming from the RTL pin. Uh, I'll put that schematic up toward the end here and let you have a look at it. Anyway, I soldered that wire on. Everything came to life. The mystery was solved. Um, I was able to tune the radio up. And I was able to use it, as you'll see very shortly. But that's the TS-520. It's a great little radio. Um, one of the problems I found with this radio in, in my work here is that somebody pulled the 10 meter crystal out and replaced it with 11 meter crystal, which is CB. So basically, it'll do 120 watts on CB um, upper or lower sideband. Uh, I'm going to try to sell this radio, and I, of course I have to tell the person who buys it that that's the problem. That the crystal can be changed, it's not a big deal, but I'm not going to mess with it. I've put enough time into this radio, got new parts, and um, but it's all been aligned and neutralized, and it's pretty much ready to go. So here's what it looks like on the air. This is a ham radio net out of Houston, Texas. I check into it weekly or every other week whenever I get a chance. And so I'm using this uh, Kenwood TS520 that I just reworked, and that's that's what I'll be doing. Um, that's what I'm using tonight on the net. Just made it a stop talking. Uh, W5 RTP, Ron in Putnam, Texas. Ron, it's your turn to talk. Uh, K5 LKJ in the group. This is W5 R Charlie Papa, Romeo Charlie Papa. John, you're close. Anyway, uh, thanks for picking me up. Um, we had a pretty good storm come through here last night. Uh, I live about 30 miles east of Abilene, and they were claiming 50 mile an hour winds at the airport in Abilene, so. Trying to run a CW contest last night, a QRP contest, and it was kind of a wash. Uh, I managed to come in second place with four contacts, so I guess it was a bad night for you. don't want to hear it. I've tried it a couple of times, and it really didn't work out, so um, that's just my take on it. Anyway, again, thanks for picking me up. I hear my buddy there, uh, W5RH, so I'm listening for him, and he's going to tell me how, how rotten this radio sounds. K5 L, uh, LKJ in the group. This is W5RCP. Thanks. Okay, Ron, very good, and thanks for the advice on that, uh, uh, on the net. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, I heard the slow CW net there trying to help you. Uh, this is a quick picture of the schematic. Um, it's pretty intricate, but it's not the most intricate around. Uh, it kept me hopping, I can tell you that. 